Hi there and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on how to carry out an independent samples t-test in Minitab. In order to do that I've gone ahead and created a mock data set uh, using two values. My independent variable is bearing and I, I've structured this as a dummy variable and I'm assuming that I have data on a thousand different machines and I've tested these machines for their failure times and I've noted that these machines have either new bearings, it's just a made up thing by the way, it could be, it could be anything you want it to be, uh, either new bearings, which is indicated by one, or no new bearings, uh, which is indicated by zero. And what I might be interested in here is the uh, effect, the possible effect between uh, new bearings and the failure time uh, of a machine. And so uh, from the perspective of, let's say, reliability engineering, I, I, I might be interested in knowing whether the new uh, bearings are associated with a longer time to failure, which would be a good thing. Now, this is well suited to analysis through uh, independent samples because uh, each of these machines is, of course, different. They're uh, uh, independently distributed from each other. So, for example, uh, the machine here in 130 is not the same as the machine in 131 which by the way has new bearings, whereas the machine in 130 has uh, old bearings over here. So in order to carry out the uh, independent samples t-test, we're going to go over here to stat, basic statistics, and then we're going to go down to two sample t. And in Minitab, the samples will be the continuous variable here for an independent samples t-test, and bearing is what Minitab designates as sample IDs. So we have a couple of options here which we can talk about. We have our confidence level, which is typically uh, 95. We could take it to uh, 99 if we wanted to change our alpha there. Uh, we have hypothesized difference, which the default is zero, but it, it could be different than that based on theoretical reasons associated with the data. And here you can kind of control the tails over here. So. Uh, if, if you remember from, let's say, Stata, if you're a Stata user, you'll see that Stata will give you information uh, p-values for each of these types of differences. If you're an SPSS user, you'll note that the default has long been uh, this, uh, two-sided uh, p-values for the two-sample t-test. Uh, here in Minitab, you have, you have a choice here. So based on the structure of the tails of your hypothesis, uh, you can go ahead and and pick here. Let's say that we don't really have a theoretical reason to assume uh, a difference um, between the bearings. Um, in that case we would we would start here with the two tails. And we can assume equal variances. It's a, it's a pretty large sample. I created a, uh, I believe a thousand data values here but we don't have to. So you know that's an option again. And here for graphs, it's uh, it's it's pretty good to have a box plot. So let's do that and ru run our data. Now here, what we see, we see a whole bunch of outliers here, by the way, um, which it's important to note. Uh, in our box plot, it looks as if machines that had the new bearings, which we said was uh, was the value of one for bearing, seems as if they have a higher fail time here than machines that did not have. The new bearing so that's a pretty good thing it looks like there is a significant difference and having bearings was a good thing because it was associated with higher times to failure now we minimize that box plot and just go look at our output here we see that minitab gives us a mean standard deviation standard error for the two cases that we were interested in in our independent samples t-test uh, no new bearings and new bearings we see that the mean of 922 for uh, new bearings is, uh, is, is, is pretty high uh, in comparison to the mean for the comparison here. And we have our p-value, which is not really a, <laughs> a surprise here at all. Uh, we have our t-value, uh, the 95% confidence interval for the difference. Notice that, of course, zero is nowhere close to being in this 95% confidence interval. Um, it's, it's pretty big. We see that the advantage conferred by new bearings is uh, about 214 hours um, worth of failure time. And then, of course, we had our box plot. So it was, uh, it was pretty easy to carry out uh, an independent samples t-test in Minitab, as we've seen. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you, and I would like to invite you to visit 
272analytics.com for access to all our free statistics tutorials in Stata, SPSS, R, eViews, and Minitab. Here at 272analytics.com, we provide data consulting primarily to graduate students. Therefore, we work very closely with you in order to perfect your Chapter 3 and Chapter 4. That means helping you design surveys, uh, getting your data input, assisting you with fashioning appropriate research questions and hypotheses, uh, getting your data, extracting them, transforming them, cleaning them, uh, putting them through analysis, uh, interpreting them, explaining them to you so that at the end of the day, you know exactly what story your data tell, why they matter, what they mean in a manner that lets you write a, a perfect chapter four uh, following a perfect chapter three and lets you defend your dissertation or thesis with complete confidence. We provide ethical consulting. It's not a writing service, so you will be responsible for taking our blueprint, our assistance, our consulting, and transforming them into an appropriate academic project for yourself. I'd also like to remind you that we provide the same services to undergraduate students who are working with quantitatively oriented assignments. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.